today I'm going to give you a quick introduction to Instalot Studio Excel. In this video, we're going to cover the workspace configuration, the viewport navigation, the viewport settings, the mesh operation settings, and the material configuration. Inside of Installed Studio Excel, the first thing that we can see is this beautiful PBR renderer. And it doesn't just look great, but it actually enables us to work on our assets in a PBR environment. And this is really useful because we know what we're going to get when we bring our processed assets into our own PBR environments or offline renderers. So let's start off by looking at the workspaces. Currently, I'm inside of my view workspace. If I want, I can change this to my vertex paint mode. And here we can start painting our meshes. This can get extremely useful to have a lot of control over optimizing or baking. For now, I'm going to jump back into my view mode. So you can actually have a lot of control over your workspace. If I want, I can go ahead and simply select my outliner and drag it over to the right and dock it right there. So you can really have a lot of control and configure it to your needs. Let's have a look at the navigation. If I press Alt, we can see that on the bottom left hand side, we've got all of the shortcuts. So I can start off by moving my camera with WASD. I can orbit my camera by pressing Alt and left clicking. I can plane and move my camera by pressing Alt, Command and moving around. And I can also set my focus point by Alt and right clicking. By pressing F, I can also focus, so either the entire scene when nothing is selected, or focus selected objects. Then I can also go ahead and rotate my environment, and I can do this by shift and left clicking. This is really useful to see how the light flows over your assets. And I can change my environment opacity by shift and left clicking. We've got all of these settings on the left hand side in the environment settings as well though. Finally, I also have the option to hide selected objects. So if I select this car hood, let me just focus on that and press H to hide it. I can get that window as well and so on. And if I want to, I can go into my outliner, right click and unhide all. And there we go. So let's have a look at the viewport settings. First of all, I've got my automatic exposure. This is really useful, especially when toggling through different HDRI lights. Let's give this a shot and move into a darker HDRI scene. Here we go. We can also see how the exposure jumps up and down when rotating around. So here we've got our camera settings where we can also change the near and far clipping plane, the aspect ratio which can get really useful especially for occlusion culling, and then we've got our environment settings here. We've got a few different render modes. Currently we're inside of the PBR render mode, but I can go ahead and change this to either vertex colors or zebra which can get really useful to analyze your shading. So if I go ahead and rotate my HDRI light, I can then see how the light flows over my asset and analyze if and where I've got broken shading so that I can target these areas and fix them. For now, I'm gonna jump back into my PBR mode though. Down in the environment settings, I can also go ahead and rotate my environment and even orbit the camera. And finally, at the bottom, we've got our scene settings where we can change a lot of different things such as occlusion culling and turning on and off FXAA or MSAA. Speaking of occlusion culling, this is actually real time, so let me go ahead and turn this on. In this scene, we're actually dealing with 10 million polygons, but when I start rotating around, we can see how the polygon count and the draw core count is jumping up and down. This is really useful, especially when we've got large assemblies. So that way you can get a more responsive viewport and an overall nicer working experience. Let's have a look at the different icons on the left hand side. The first one here is focus. This is the same as pressing F on your keyboard. Then we have our UV viewer. This is very handy. Then we've got the output log. And this is really useful to see how far through your mesh process you are or seeing what's going on in the background. Then we can turn on vertex painting mode. And then down here we can toggle on or off our wireframe. 
Then we have our grid, which is also useful to see the scale of our assets. In this case, I can see that this vehicle is two meters wide. Each of these blue boxes is one meter. Then I can toggle on and off the visibility of back faces. And then I can also show my normals on selected areas. For example, here I can see where my normals are pointing. With the next icon, I can highlight selected objects. And this is very useful, especially when having large assemblies, I can select a few objects in my outliner and see where these objects are, even though they're not in my line of sight. Finally, I've got my filter. This is very useful to filter out your objects, have a look at them individually, or what it can also be very useful for is applying mesh operation settings to the selected objects only. So let me go ahead and actually create a new profile. To do that, I'm gonna to go to File, New Profile, and I'm just gonna call this one Test for now. So on the top right hand side, we've got our mesh operation settings. So everything from optimizing, remeshing, all the way over to the mesh toolkit, where we've got a load of really useful features. On the bottom right hand side, we've also got our material configuration. This is very handy because now we can start configuring our materials to our needs. In the material editor, I've got a filter, which enables me to filter out the selected object's material. Let me go ahead and change my car paint, for example. Instead of having a black car paint, I wanna go ahead and bring that roughness down. And instead of it being black, I wanna make this a red car paint. And there we go, we can create some beautiful renders here. Let me go ahead and turn on the environment rotation so I can really appreciate the shading on this asset. The great thing is, if I wanted to, I could now go ahead and do a bake operation or a remesh of the entire vehicle and bake out all of the maps, including metalness, roughness, ambient occlusion, and so on, and have this asset real-time ready in just a few minutes. I hope this introduction helped you to get started within Slot Studio XL and stay tuned for the next videos where we cover some revolutionary workflows.